Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Last weekend I was lucky enough to have been able to go to the cinema as restrictions here in London are easing. I was very eager to watch Judas and the Black Messiah and after watching this amazing and very important film I was inspired to create this week's video on Emery Douglas, the legendary Black Panther artist. So let's get into it. Emery Douglas was an integral part of the Black Panther Party, joining as Minister of Culture in 1967 and designing artwork that became dominant symbols of the movement. Although the party ceased to operate from 1980, its legacy lives on, as does Douglas's work. How did Emery Douglas become such a revolutionary and radical artist? Well, he was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1943. Emery spent most of his life in San Francisco Bay Area. He was arrested early in his life which contributed to him pursuing a life as an artist whose work uncovers the abuses of power within the justice system. At the age of 13 is when he was arrested for gambling while he was only playing a game of dice on the streets. He was sent to a California youth detention centre. Looking at his life at this time, Emery looked like he was on the path to prison. However, with the influence of his supportive mother, he was assigned to work in the juvenile detention centre's print shop. Here is where he learned about the technology behind the commercial printing process, which fueled his craving to seek a career in graphic design and so went to study it at San Francisco College. His quickly expanding political awareness urged him to join the Black Students' Union, where Emery became integrated part of the developing Black Power movement, which concurred with anti-Vietnam War sentiment and a rising feminist wave to make an era of considerable cultural change. Douglas started hanging out at the newly organised Black Panther Party headquarters in 1966. The Black Panther Party was founded by activists Bobby Seale and Huey Norton. In reaction to police brutality and socio-economic inequality among the growing black population of Oakland, California, I guess it was him being in the right place at the right time when Huey Newton said, let's start a newspaper. Douglas came to the realization that his design experience and drawing skills would be a valuable asset to the organization and movement. Intuitively, he knew that it would take the combination of powerful imagery and the right words to efficiently bring the Black Panther's message to their community. The newspaper was in print until 1980, which included various images by Emery, and reached its peak distribution of an estimated 139,000 to 400,000 readers a week in 1970 to 1971. Douglas's influential artwork of the 1960s were accomplished through the processes of silkscreen and collage, mirroring the mission of the Black Panther Party by noticeably highlighting revolutionaries, handling weapons, depictions of police as pigs and messages such as revolution in our lifetime. A couple of examples of his work I appreciate are September 27th, 1969. This work references the aftermath of the Chicago riots of 1968, in which it became apparent the mayor, Richard Daly, was involved in the suppression of progressive organizations. Another one is September 21st, 1974, shows Emery illustrating how corporate interests controlled the president like a puppet. Companies such as Ford, Pan Am, Pepsi and IBM are shown as the controllers. April 17th, 1976 is another artwork where COINTELPRO, the FBI's counterintelligence program, was a series of covert FBI operations against the Panthers. The faces represent those killed. The objectives of the party shifted in the 1970s to helping the community more through programs like free breakfast for children, free healthcare, free education and drug counselling. 
During this period, Douglas's illustrations changed from ones of revolution to images addressing support of black businesses, opposition to political corruption and promotion of the free services offered by the Black Panthers. His work on the newspaper concluded when the group reduced dramatically in the early 1980s. Most recently, last year, at the age of 77, he worked with the director Spike Lee to adapt his original image of anti-Vietnam into a poster for Lee's Netflix film The Five Bloods, about the war from the perspective of five black veterans. Douglas has been on the receiving end of many well-deserved accolades for his fearless and powerful use of graphic design in the Black Panther Party's struggle for civil rights and against racism, oppression and social injustice. He has also exhibited his work twice in Los Angeles where they showcased his posters. An extremely powerful artist and storyteller, Emery Douglas has built a legacy of visual representation of what is achievable for the people of the world and accessible to all who choose to see it. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Emery Douglas. If there is any other artist or designer's life you want to learn more about, please leave it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like and please subscribe and put your notifications on so that you can be notified for when I next post. See you on the next one. Bye.